Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Oh, we've got a great one for you today. We've got a little button there. When you click on the button, it's going to pop up a video which will automatically start to play. Now this will work on any WordPress website. You can do it with a Gutenberg editor, you can do it with Elementor. I just happen to be doing it with the Divi theme today. But like I say, it'll work across all those platforms. Got to do a bit of coding with this today. Don't let that worry you. Any coding I do, I've already done it for you. It's pretty much copy and paste. Let me take you through. Okay, so here we have our website. If I roll down just a little bit here. I've got a little red button there. When I click on this button, it's going to auto play a video just like that. Fantastic little feature to have on your site, as you can see. When I click on it again, it's going to disappear. And if you click on it again, it'll play it from where it was, unless you refresh the page. If you refresh the page, it'll start over again. And that's a great little feature to have on your site. Really easy to do. Got to do a little bit of coding for this today, but I've done it all for you. So it's a simple matter of copy and pasting and you can tweak the code to your liking. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And let's go down to where we want to work. I'm going to go ahead and delete what I've got going on here. I'm going to go to the back end to do this. So I'm hitting the little purple button. Little icon on the left hand side, wireframe view. We can get to the back end. Here's my two little code modules. Here's my two little code modules. Let's delete that whole row. Or we can go back to the front end there. I'm just going to save my changes and quickly refresh this page. Okay, well, let's go down to where we actually want to put this module. I put it just below this one. You can put it any way you want on your site. So I'm going to click on the section. I'm going to click on the row above and hit the little green button to add a new row in mine. I'm going to add a new row with a single column. Inside my column, I'm going to add a Divi code module. Well, we're actually going to code this button today. Now, like I said earlier, I've done all the coding for you. So you can pretty much copy and paste and just change it to your needs. Get this out of the way, or oh, I'll put it over here, I guess. I'll put this link down below the video. If you click on it, it should pop up this PDF. And I guess we'll do the button first. So let's go down. I've got the button down on this second page down here. And I'm going to copy it from the opening pointy bracket there to the closing pointy bracket of the style there. Control C to copy. I'm going to go back to the site and the code module. I'm going to paste it in there. As you can see, we've got our button. Now, of course, you might not want a red button and I'll take you through this code so you can change it however you wish. Okay, well, we've got to do a bit of CSS coding now to style the button. Then you can style it however you want. I've left some blank spaces up there in the code if you want to give it a class name and make it into an elegant themes type button. Or there's CSS code that I've put down below there. And I'll show you how to manipulate it. Really easy to do. Don't have to have any worries about CSS. If you don't like what you've done, just simply delete it. It'll go back to how it was. So let's style this button. Here's the actual button ID. It's called play button. And we're going to need this later on for our JavaScript. So it needs to be called have an ID of play button. I put a class there and a style there just in case you wanted to style it on your own. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But I also got styles for it right down here. And as you can see, I've got a bit of a margin on the bottom of 30 pixels. And that's if you want to have the video open below it. And you can change that to top here if you want to have the video open above it and need a bit of space. As you can see, the background's red. Change that to any color you want, say purple. Or of course, you can put in a hex code or an RGBA, whatever you want there. Mine's got no border. If you want to put a border in there, you can change it from none 
let's say we'll have a two pixel solid uh, black border. As you can see now, it's got a black border. I'm happy to have no border on mine then. So I'm going to change about that back to none. Fantastic. Make sure you put a semicolon on the end. If you don't, it won't read the next line of text. Now I've got a slight curvature on the borders there. Border radius is six picks. If you want it more for now, it's just up the amount there. If you want it to be pill shaped, put a real high value in like 50, something like that. That's fine. I'm going to leave it like that. Font size, as you can see there, is 18 picks. If you want to make it bigger, put a higher value in. Smaller, smaller value, obviously. Padding, top and bottom is 15. Left and right is 30 picks there. You want it to be deeper, you can up this. If you want it to be wider, you can up this. Don't think I want it quite as wide as that. Take it back down to what it was, 15 and 30. Actually, that's quite nice. I'll leave it at 15 and 50, but that's entirely up to you. If you want to change the color of the text here, let's make it black. You can do so there. I was happy with the white though. Great. Well, let's just cut this styling away and I'll show you what it, a generic button actually looks like. If I can just comment it out, comment stuff out. It's just forward slash star and then star forward slash at the end there. And that's a regular button if you just put in a button ID. If you want it to be a Divi type button, you can give it a class name up here of ET underscore PB underscore button. And you've got a Divi type button. And you can actually add the colors down here or the style here if you want to, if you want to make a background color in there. Between the two little inverted commas I left in there for you, you can put in background, whatever color you want. I'll just say blue. And you can take change the text color to white if you want to. Put a semicolon on the end. Color. And white's a FFF CFS3. And we've got it white there. And with the Divi button, you get the little icon on hover there. But I'm happy with my little custom button. Just an option for you. Take that away. I will take those style tags away. I just put them in there in case you wanted to style it that way on your own. I'm happy with mine being styled individually down below there. Just put this back the way it was. And then let's change that purple back to a red, I think. I think I actually put a hover color in that I perhaps don't have here. Great. No, I don't have it up there, but that's okay. I'll show you exactly how to do that. To create a hover color, let's copy our ID up there, which is hashtag play button. Make sure we get all of it, including the hashtag. We'll drop down below this curly bracket here, and I'll paste it back in there. Right on the end with no gap, I'm going to put a colon and the word hover. I'm going to open some more curly brackets inside. We can tell it what to do when we hover over it. So let's copy the background red. And we'll change that to a blue, perhaps. As you can see, when I hover over it now, it's turning to blue. If you want to slow that down for a bit of grace, you can put in a transition duration. Transition dash duration. Let's put maybe half a second. 0.5 S. And that'll slow it down so it's more of a gradual fade to color there. I quite like that. Now that's not in the code above. So that's just transition duration in the regular styles here. And to create the hover effect, it's the ID with a colon on hover and then whatever background color you want there. Great. Well, I'm going to pop this in the middle. To pop it in the middle, I found the easiest way to do it is to go into the actual module itself. We'll go down to sizing and let's give it perhaps a size of 100, 180 pixels width wise. I'll try that. 180 PX. Make sure you put in the PX or it'll put in percentage truth. That's obviously not enough because it's broken the words there. So let's increment up until it's enough. There we go. Now we've done that, we can pop it in the middle. 
Perfect. Well, let's now pop up the video that we want to pop up. And to do this, we've got to use a bit of JavaScript. Okay, well, now we've got our button taken care of. It's time to add the little video. Now, I've written some JavaScript code for you here. And again, it's just copy and paste. A couple of little tweaks we've got to make. Uh, essentially, the most important one is the ID of your video. You can go to YouTube and just get the last few letters, and I'll take you through that in a moment to change the ID of whatever video it is you want to pop up. I've got the JavaScript to display it only when you click on that button, and it'll autoplay. You click on it again, it'll stop. Click on it again, as long as you haven't refreshed the page, it'll pick up where you left off. Really nice little feature. As I say, easy to do. Let's get it done. So let's click on the button. I'm going to add a new module. You can see the margin we've got on the button there. I'm going to put another code module in for our video. Now let's go back up to here and everything else above this line from the closing script tag to the opening pointy bracket up there. You want to copy, make sure you get all that control C to copy, go back to the site and we'll paste it in there. Now we can't see anything because it's hidden, obviously, but let's just look at this script here. I'm not going to go too deeply into it. Basically, we've got a wrapper called player wrapper with an ID of player. And it's, we've got a function here that's telling it to get this script when it clicks on our little button over there. When it does, it's going to pop out a video player with a height. 360 and a width of 640 those are pixels now this is the video id you want to get from youtube for your video so mine's on line 22 here and i've put a little note there replace video id with your video id and if you do make sure not to cut off those little inverted commas either and that's really important and here's our play button id and this is telling it when we click that button on click there it's going to display or not display this and it's going to auto play it. So let's just get a little different video. I've got one put in there, but let's just get a different one so I can show you what to do here. Okay. Well, I've got one of my videos over here on YouTube. If we look up in the URL, it says youtube.com watch question mark V equals. And just after the equals sign, this is the bit we want a code right there on the end. So I've got to copy that control C. Go to my code here, remember on line 22, video ID. And in between, inverted commas there, make sure you don't cut them off. I know I said that already, but it's important. I pasted that little ID right there. So let's save our changes. And we'll see if this is going to work. We'll exit the visual builder. We'll roll on down. There's our little button note right there. When I hover over it, it's turning blue. When I click on it, it's opening up and playing that video right there. When I click on it again, it's going to disappear. Click on it again. It'll continue playing where it was until the page is refreshed. But I actually want that in the middle. I mean, you might want yours on the side, but I want mine in the middle. We're going to do the same with that as we actually did with our button right there. And I think I'd prefer if the video popped up on top. I mean, this looks okay right there. I'd kind of like it to pop up on top of that button. So if we enable the visual builder again, we'll roll on down to where we were working. I'm going to go to back end mode. Easiest way to find code modules. I know we've got our button displayed for us there. There's the button one right there. And if you wanted to, you could mark them with the admin tab. If we go into that button. Under content, roll down, admin tab. Video button. Makes it even easier to find. We can do the same with the video. Go in there under content, roll down to the admin tab or admin label, I should say. And we'll say video pop up. As you can see, they're marked nicely there for our back end mode. But while we're in here, if we look at this video, and I briefly touch on this just now, 
video's got a width of 640. If you want it in the middle, we'll do the same as we did with our button. I'm going to go to my design. I'm going to go to sizing, width, 640, wasn't it? So I'm going to put 640. Make sure you put the pixel on the end again, or else it will put percentage in. Make sure we align that in the middle. That'll pop out in the middle this time. Like I say, I want the video on top of the button, I believe. So I'm going to pop this up on top here. So let's save our changes. And exit the visual builder. We'll roll on down. There's our little button coming into view right there. If I click on it now, it should pop up above the button and below the content on top. Fantastic, just what we wanted. And that's a great little feature to add to your website. Let's just stop that video. And you may notice that when we pop up, it's got all the controls so you can make it full screen. You can mute it if you want to. Do all the regular things. You can go to YouTube and watch it on there. Fantastic. And I'll show you, this will work with any WordPress theme. We've done it with the Divi theme in the Divi code module, but you could do it just as easily with the Gutenberg or Elementor or whatever page builder you're using with their code modules. If I add a new page here, I'm going to use the default editor. So we just got a regular WordPress page here. Let's hit the plus. Let's search for HTML. And there it is. I'm going to grab that block and I'll pop it over there. I'm going to go up to my PDF here. Now let's copy the video code. And we're all the way down to that closing script tag. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. And we're going to add another HTML module below. So if we hit the plus again, HTML. And drag this one below or above, wherever you want to put your button. We'll go down to our button code on the second page here. Control C to copy again. And we'll paste it in there. Great. Well, let's save draft now. And we'll view the preview. There it is. That's our page title up there. When I click on the play video, it's going to play the video for us. Like I say, you can do this on any WordPress site you want. Fantastic. I do find it easier to style with the Divi though. Perfect. Just what the doctor ordered. And don't forget, you can find this code or a link to this PDF just down below. And all you need to do is copy and paste just like I've done in the video. So there we have it, guys. There's how to create a button that when clicked, going to pop up a video that will autoplay. Really, really good little feature to have on your site. Nice little interactive feature that can keep people engaged. Of course, they can watch the video. You can get your point across, which is fantastic. And as you can see, although I've used the Divi theme for this today, you can do it on Gutenberg, you can do it on Elementor, you can do it on pretty much anything you want. HTML sites, bootstrap sites, it'll work for those too. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, comment because it's awesome to hear from you, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have enjoyed this today, have a look at our simple CSS video. It's going to pop up over here in any minute. And there's something there for everybody. And most of it, I've done it all for you. It's copy and paste. And you can just change things the way that you want to change them for your site. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.